Anyways, in this video, I'm going to be showing you my favorite lighting settings for a cartoony build. I've got this little low poly build going on right here that I'm going to be changing up during the course of this video, or at least the lighting, to see how much better we can make this look just by changing a few settings. If you're interested in learning about what kind of cartoon lighting goes best for your game, make sure you stick around to the end, because you're probably going to learn a lot about lighting. Let's get right into it. First off, let's open up the lighting service right here, and you might see a lot of stuff inside of here. That's fine, because all you want to do is just delete all of it, and it's already looking a little better in all honesty. However, there's something that we need to add inside of here. If you click on the plus icon right here, let's search for a color correction effect. What this color correction effect does is it allows us to change a lot of properties of our lighting such as the brightness, contrast, saturation, and tint color. So as for the brightness, I personally always put this one on a low value, something like 0.05 just to make it a little bit brighter but not too bright that it overwhelms the whole scene. After that, I always like to put a little bit of contrast onto the build. I think it helps the colors pop out a little bit more. So I put that on anywhere from 0.1 to 0.2. 0 0.2. 0.2 is getting a little drastic, so you can maybe even do 1.5. It really depends on what your build is looking like. However, I'm just going to do 0.1. After that, I always like to go a little easy on the saturation as well, so it doesn't burn the player's eyes. I typically go from 0.1 to 0.3, however 0.3 is a little saturated, so I'm going to do 0.15 right about here. After that, we don't need to mess with the tint color at all, I think it's good the way it is. So let's go over to our lighting settings. This is where a lot of the game is going to change, at least the look of it that way, because this is where all the good settings are at. So up here at the top of your properties, you'll see a box called Ambient. And this is basically the hue of the global lighting. Changing this changes the color tint of all objects inside of the workspace. So right now it's kind of at a dark gray color, and we just want to change this to a much brighter purple color. Once again, you don't want it to be too bright at all because that can be very overwhelming inside of your scene, but a nice pinkish purplish color goes great and does a lot for your game. This one's a little bit too much. I've got something written down that I normally put in a lot of my games. This is 212, 170, 240. This is a perfect mix that I've found that works really great for some of my builds. However, you can feel free to mess around whether you want that darker, brighter, or any other color. After that, I prefer to turn the brightness a little bit down because we're going to be doing a lot of stuff later with shadows and lighting and everything. I feel like having the brightness just turned a little bit down helps not so much to burn the eyes. For the color shift bottom, this is basically the hue of lighting on the bottom of an object. And since the bottoms of the objects aren't really going to be seen all too much, we can just leave that at 0, 0, 0. However, for the color shift top, instead of being at the bottom of the object, this is for the lighting at the top of an object. So one of my favorite combinations for this is kind of a more orangish tint. I prefer something like 206, 182, 129. It's that very subtle orangish hint, I think, that really gives the build a very vague increase in just color and decoration. Overall, it just makes it look really good. I like to keep my environment diffuse scale at 1. Not many people agree with me on this for some reason. I think it overall looks really great on a low poly build. However, other people seem not to agree with that. You can feel free to change this down. I've heard other people that change it down to something like 0.3, but I feel like this gives way too much of an orange tint. So I prefer to leave it at 1. I think it's perfectly fine like that. However, for the environment specular scale, you'll see that as we turn this down, you'll see that kind of the shininess around some of our objects here will go down. I prefer to have this at around 0.3. I think it gives everything a more kind of flat feeling to it. It's not so shiny anymore. I think that's great for low poly. After that, global shadows I think are an absolute must for builds inside of a low poly game. If you turn them off, it just simply doesn't look that great. It looks a little too fake in my opinion. So I'm going to keep those on and it really helps add some more decoration and detail to the map. After that we have the outdoor ambience. This is pretty much the version of ambience but for the outdoors. I'm going to change this one to 128, 102, 
153. You may not notice any changes at all, and that's because the ambience, the original ambience really kind of takes over here. In fact, you'll really not see much of a change whatever color you put it, but I think it's still good to have it at a specific color. After that, we have the shadow softness. I always like to leave this at a little bit of a higher number, something like anywhere from 0.5 to 0 0.3 or so. This is basically just how blurry the shadows are. If you put 0, then the shadows are going to be insanely crisp and clear, which can be great and all, but I prefer to have a much more blurry shadow. I think it fits the low poly aesthetic. After that, we have the technology. These are different types of lighting settings or presets, basically. There are four different ones. We have compatibility, future, shadow map, and voxel. Compatibility doesn't look too great in my opinion, but it can go good with a lot of different styles and games. Future is mainly used for realistic type games, as a lot of specific things with reflections and lighting and stuff like that. Shadow map is your typical cartoony or just normal lighting that you'll use. And then voxel is an older technology that I believe it looks like it just gets rid of the shadows. I've never really used Voxel all that much, but if you like it, you can use it however much you want to. Now that we're getting down into the clock time, my favorite clock time to put here is 14. This is really the time of day that it is. It determines where the sun is at, whether you want the moon or the sun to be out. If you want a dark map, or not just a dark map, but maybe a map that's at nighttime, you could set this down to zero, or maybe like, five or six. It really depends on what you want for your map. I'm going to choose mine to be in the daytime though. I think it really helps this map a lot. After that for the geographic latitude, this is where the sun and the moon are positioned in the sky and they help with shadows. So if I were to put this up to 40, which I usually do, you can see it changes the way the shadows look because now the sun is over here instead of being over there somewhere, which is pretty, pretty cool. And that's about all the settings that we're going to be using to alter our map's appearance. However, there are a few more, these ones called Fog. These ones help so much inside of a build to help bring some detail to the outsides of the map. Well, let's put the Fog End right here to 2500. I typically do anywhere from 2000 to 3000 for a low poly build. I'm going to set mine on 2800 for this one. I think it'd look really good. And you can see that we've got kind of a foggy mist on the outside of our island here. And we don't want it to be this kind of grayish color. In fact, we want it to be a nice pinkish color. So instead of 192, 192, 192, I'm just going to change it to 203, 173, and then 255. And what this does, it changes the color of the fog around us. And I think this looks really cool. It really brings a nice outline, not really outline, but some more detail to the map, and I really like the way that this looks. In fact, I'm going to change the fog end down a little bit, just so we get a little bit more of that fog. So I think this ended up looking much, much better than the original. Just to show you guys the original, I'm going to go back and revert all of our changes here. So, as you can see, this is what the map looked like before we started. Very dull, very lifeless, not very colorful. It just doesn't look very appealing. Let's go forward now and check out all the changes that we made. As you can see, it's going through all of the settings that we made earlier. And look at the difference between that. That is absolutely an insane difference. And I think this lighting goes good with any sort of cartoony style. I'm using this lighting in a multitude of games at the moment, but you can feel free to use them to however you want them. Anyways, I think that's going to be where I wrap up this video guys, so make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below if this video helped you a lot. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.